Hey, I'm Isaac Shano Johnson. If you don't know me, I'm a musician, composer, producer, and I make videos about all that fun stuff. Music, music composition, music production. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see videos like this in the future. So today's video is gonna be about why you should learn solfege or some other method of learning the scale degrees in major scales, minor scales, and all of that stuff. So solfege is an Italian naming system for different scale degrees. So the first scale degree in a major scale is Do, the second scale degree is Re, third scale degree is Mi, fourth scale degree is Fa, fifth scale degree is Sol, La is the sixth scale degree, and T is the seventh scale degree. Now there is some variation with some of these syllables, but for the most part, that's generally what they are. And they're used to name certain scale degrees and often used to learn to sight sing and learn to sight read music. Now with solfege, there is also other scales that you can use with solfege. A quick disclaimer before I get into this video, I'm gonna be talking about movable dough solfege rather than fixed dough solfege. So the main difference between the two is fixed dough solfege has dough on one specific note. That's C. Do is always C, Re is always D, Mi is always E. Those syllables always match up with those notes. Now, movable dough solfege, the one that I'm gonna be talking about, is moving dough depending on where the key center is. So dough is whatever the home note or the root note of the scale. So if you have a song that's in, let's say, D major, then dough is gonna be the note D. And if you have a song that's in A flat major, dough is gonna be A flat. It's just gonna change depending on where your home, your root note is in the scale. So there is some variation with solfege in singing other scales than the major scale. So some people for the minor scale might sing the root note as la. Some other people might be singing it as do. Personally, I would sing it as do because I think it's easier to remember that do is always the root of the scale. Even if you're singing in, let's say, the Mixolydian or Lydian modes or Phrygian, do is always the root note. That's where you end up. That's the tonic. That to me helps me orient myself and readjust in my head the different sounds to be within that scale rather than thinking, oh, this song ends on me, right? Home in this song, the root scale for this, the root note for this song is me. That's a little more confusing to me. I personally like solfege because it gives me something to hold on to, something to sort of orient and adjust myself to in music when I'm hearing a song that's not related to something else I already have. So it gives me something to hold on to and something to use kind of as a map that's not something that I use for anything else. Let's get into why it's useful. The main thing I find it useful for is learning the relative relationships between notes. So if you're learning a major scale and you want to be able to hear what specific scale degrees are being used in a melody, you can use solfege to figure that out. Then, once you figure out what the key is, you'll be able to play it on whatever instrument you have right away. For example, if you're hearing, let's say, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and you can hear that you're going from the first scale degree twice, to the fifth scale degree twice, to the up to the sixth scale degree twice, down to the fifth scale degree, Regardless of what key that's being played in, you can understand what notes those are if you figure out the key. You can sort of abstractly figure out what the notes would be in all of the different keys that it could be in. And then once you can orient yourself to the right key, you know exactly the note names. Personally, it's useful for me because unlike Charlie Puth, I do not have perfect pitch, but it can be just as useful as being able to know the exact note names because you can figure them out once you play a couple notes on your instrument. Okay, so often you'll see this type of scene in a movie where a musician hears a song and they think it's really interesting but they've never looked at the music or they've never learned it before. So they sit there and they're like, oh yeah, that's a cool song, yeah, 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 let me play it really quick. And they sit down at the piano and they like plunk out a couple notes and it sounds really weird and then right away they can play it. What they're doing in those first few notes is orienting themselves to the key. Once they have the key, they know all the relative relationships between these notes in the song, but they don't know the exact notes. So once they have that one key, that do, that home note, that root scale of the key, they can figure out all of the other notes because they know everything in relation to that. So it can be super useful in learning to be able to do that with a song. You don't have to necessarily use do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do 
in order to learn that specific skill of hearing a song and being able to understand it and then being able to sit down and play it once you find the key. But I personally like solfege a lot. You could use numbers or something else. The way I learned how to do stuff like that and the way I learned ear training was through solfege and I personally find it really useful. Now, how can you go about learning this? How can you go about working on that skill? Well, the main thing that helped me and helps me do this is by learning melodies in solfege or learning melodies in relation to their scale degrees. So whatever song you're learning, let's say you're learning a song by Ariana Grande, learn what she's singing in relation to solfege. Figure out the solfege syllables of that melody or the scale degrees of that melody and sing it with those scale degrees and try and hear what they are. Another thing you can do to help yourself work on this and get better at this skill is to learn the specific sounds of certain syllables. For example, can you hear in your head what do up to la sounds like? Can you hear what do to re sounds like? Work on hearing those differences. That might mean just sitting at your instrument, playing it, and then singing it back, and just singing do re do, do re do, do mi do. Do mi do, do fa do, do fa do, do sol do, do sol do, and you keep going through all the different iterations of that. And you could learn different scales, right? So what would a Dorian scale sound like in solfege, right? You'd have to sing do re me, fa sol la, te do. And then you could sing up those scale degrees, up those solfege syllables to hear the sound of that scale. Solfege has syllables for every single note. And one weird thing about solfege is maybe not super useful, but something I find interesting about it is those syllables change whether you're going up or down. Now in written notation for musical notation, the same thing happens. If you're going up a chromatic scale, that will look differently than going down a chromatic scale. Most of that is just for ease of visuals. It's to make it easier to look at. If you're playing up a chromatic scale and you have B flat, then B with a natural sign, then C, then D flat, then D with a natural sign, that doesn't make as much sense as doing A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, because you have fewer symbols, right? If you play up that scale, B flat, B natural, C, D flat, D natural, you have a whole bunch of symbols. But if you use sharps going up, you'd have A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. Now solfege does something similar, which is a little strange. So if you have do going up to do, you have do, D, re, re, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. That's a little weird. So if you're going down in solfege, you have do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Now the reason I'm laughing is when you're singing it, it doesn't make as much sense to change the syllables going up as going down. I personally don't know why that is. If somebody has a video on that or somebody has information, I'll look that up. But the main thing is solfege has syllables for every single note in the 12 tone scale. So you could make any scale into solfege, a minor scale, a Dorian scale, a Phrygian scale, an octatonic scale, whatever scale you want can be made into a solfege scale and sung with solfege. So if you're learning solfege and you want to get better at it and you want to be able to hear certain songs in solfege within that syllable scale degree naming system, then I would learn songs in solfege. So whatever song that you're singing, whatever songs you like, try and hear them in solfege and pay attention to how far those notes are away from each other. One other thing that you can do is learn about harmonic analysis. So figure out how certain chord progression sound, right? Can you hear what a 1451 sounds like? Because that'll help you hear what do, fa, sol, do sounds like, at least in the bass. It'll also help you figure out what specific notes go into each of those chords, right? Can you hear that there's a la in a four chord? So all of this stuff can be super overwhelming, so I would definitely work on it slowly. It's something to slowly and progressively get better at rather than something to learn in a week, right? And it does take time to get used to all of the solfege syllables and how all of that sounds in relation to the major scale. It's something that with time and with practice, you can 100% get used to and hear a song and think, oh yeah, I know the solfege for that. I know what scale degrees that's using. 
And once you're there, what that means is you can figure out that song at the piano almost immediately. Once you figure out the key and you figure out where Do is, you basically know all of the notes in that melody and you can play it right away. It's kind of like a magic trick, honestly, because you can understand all of these sounds and music that you're hearing kind of right away. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about music. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. See you next time. Peace.